Washington Department of Enterprise Services, and if you all are interested here in, um, in getting access to the uh, state money, county money, don't forget the state of Washington. Um, and so there are projects going on all over the state, and I wanted to kind of give you an update. I'll tell you in my 31 years of public service for the state of Washington, uh, we are right now in an era of what I would call the most serious effort for supplier diversity and state contracting. And so some major things have been going on, and I want to share those with you. Go ahead, next slide. Next slide. Thank you. First, let's look a little bit back here. And this is a history that goes back from 1997 to 2012. And our performance has been uh, very, very bad. Uh, we have 1.3% uh, of our construction projects happening with uh, certified minority firms and 1.0% with women firms. Um, so, and you can see kind of the history, and this is when I-200 occurred, and it was not great before, and it really isn't great after. So, uh, we have some serious things that we have to do to really do some biodiversity. Next slide. Uh, so one of the things I think that really gives us a lot of uh, punch for making a real difference for supply diversity is probably the strongest effort from a governor to date. So Governor Inslee uh, has really said that this is really part of quality of life. It's uh, part of our economy and it's supply diversity really fits under quality of life. And so he has set some really strong goals, you know, MBE 10%, WBE 6%, small business 5%, Veterans Affairs, Veteran Business is 5%, with a big emphasis on state certified. And this means that we are you know, really going to count the businesses that really are diverse. Um, so the big emphasis is on state certification. And again, the legislature has made sure that that has, is an on-ramp. So when you come to small business, you self-certify on webs, and there's some flyers over there, it's free. Uh, you do it on your own time online. Uh, Veterans Affairs is really just um, your honorable discharge papers, 51% ownership. It's free to certify and they can certify you in about a week. That's the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs. And then our Office of Minority Women Business Enterprises has been doing tremendous work to streamline that process and make sure that uh, you can get certified. That's how a certification that's handed out to anybody. Uh, there is a significant process, but again, we want to make sure that the people that are identified as diverse really are diverse. Next slide, please. So this takes staffing and a Department of Enterprise Services. You know, I've moved from the procurement reform effort into business diversity, and that was a really important step, a lot of work, a lot of learning. And in order to really make that work, I was doing a lot of what I would call sort of the pre-design work, but we really needed implementation on the ground to start that. So um, serious effort was made, and my boss, Carl Presnell, and the director provided funding so that we could have um, another outreach manager, and that's Mike North, and also the funding also came from that from our facilities division. So this isn't coming like from just contracts and legal. It's now coming from facilities, another division within Department of Enterprise Services. So you have two divisions pulling for supply diversity within Department of Enterprise Services. And that means, I always say pay is the P in partnership, and both of them are paying. So, next slide, please. Uh, you know, it's a big organizational effort, and we, uh, first effort is to look to the leaders. So certainly City of Seattle has been a leader, and we've been working with them to really understand the workings of how they do supply diversity. The state isn't going to be able to do it the same way, but there are a lot of good lessons there that we can adapt from. Uh, the other thing that we found is that, you know, as we talk to construction firms, they're willing. Um, they know how to do this, uh, and they're willing to work with the state of Washington. And again, you know, the contractors and design firms that we're uh, looking at right now and working with on current projects, they're showing a willingness to work and perform better with supply diversity than they ever have before. So uh, we're really encouraged by some of our early efforts. Next slide. So one of the things is you don't get supply diversity without really looking at your operating environment. And so our operating environment at um, Department of Enterprise Services really needed to be looked at. And I will tell you that while I'm a person who likes to do research and plan, uh, our director is supply diversity now, uh, not later. And Bill Ferrari, who's over here with uh, facilities, is very much 
supply diversity now, not later. So before I was ready, Bill Furry said, well, we're going to do a lean project on our business processes around how we do construction selection, how we do advertising, how we do A&E selection. And I'm like, we're not ready yet. Well, the meeting's on Monday. And that was about two months ago, before I really wasn't ready. But I think what happens there is that that's a really good approach, because supply diversity at Department of Enterprise Services isn't about Saranga Patlan. It isn't about what Mike North can do. It is about what every one of those project managers can do. And so in the lean process, we engage the people who do the contracts, who build the solicitation, who manage the projects. And at the end of the day, they are now telling me how to do supply diversity. And so that is really what we want to do. And now I have a bunch of bosses at DES telling me how to do supply diversity. The other half of that is that we are not the owner. And so that's a very big difference that uh, the state of Washington from City of Seattle. City of Seattle is typically the owner representing the projects they're doing. We are often doing construction on behalf of the community and colleges some of the buildings on campus, but at the end of the day, the people who are really going to benefit from supplier diversity, it's a value-add service that Department of Enterprise Services is providing for many of the community colleges, which are many of the projects engaged. And so, and then for, we work with other state agencies too on their projects. So one of the very most important things we needed to do was each agency has an assistant attorney general. And if you get a bunch of attorneys in the room, they never agree, right? And so one of the very first steps that Chris asked was he asked our Attorney General to basically lead an effort around researching supplier diversity and the different supplier diverse methods that we're thinking about and to start sharing that information among all of the Assistant Attorney Generals who advise all the different state agencies. So as we bring supplier diversity as a state value add to an agency project and they want to talk about it with their Attorney General, they have all heard about it. They've all heard about the methods. They've all had a chance to discuss. And so it's not a, an immediate roadblock. It's something they've already heard about and understand. And again, it's the biodiversity now, not when we've got it all researched out and planned. And so let's start talking about it now and getting to a, a common place. Next slide, please. Uh, so, you know, when we talked about there, it's uh, we have a vision for unity and around supply diversity. And that's within the whole giant Department of Enterprise Services. So again, we're involving our project managers, and I talked about those lean projects, to basically figure out how do we document contracts? Which are the contract documents? Can we be common terms? Can we be doing this the same way? Oh, we have different construction methods. Where are those documents? Let's make sure that the great supplier diversity on ID, one project makes it to the next project. Empower our construction project managers to seek the supplier diversity values at every meeting. As I said, now they're telling me how to do supplier diversity, but more important, they're doing talking about supply diversity with the selected prime contractor. And so at every meeting they're saying, well, we really like the inclusion plan, but we're really interested in more. We really like the inclusion plan, but we're really interested in more. And so that is starting to yield really good results. Uh, and again, empower our contractors to deliver supply diversity as a customer service value. That it's a service value for our customers, which may be a community college or a project on the Capitol campus. And so that is uh, really important, and that's where we're heading. Next slide, please. So when we look at planning, again, we're doing it now. We're pulling out those good ideas, and we're starting to form a model plan so that we can start to repeat some of the successes and not repeat some of the troubles that we run into. Again, formal processes will be developed for each delivery construction method. And so construction methods are defined in state law, and they're very different for each method. So we want to make sure the supplier diversity Concepts make it into every delivery method. And again, training is being developed for capturing the results and measures and new communication channels. So when we talk about Washington Electronic Business Solution, which communicates by email, notice and you can log in and look at any projects that are out there. Uh, we are hearing that email doesn't work. And we know it doesn't work very well because we get a lot of email bounce backs. And so we are implementing a new tool called Gut Delivery. And when that's up, you will be able to select email notifications, Twitter, Facebook, uh, many of the other social medias that uh, text messaging that might work more for, especially for a small business that's on the go. Uh, so we're really excited about that and we're working on that. Next, please. Uh, and so basically these are kind of our tools. And I threw these up here because this is how you can find out about contracts. And one of the things that you notice is, gosh, there's a lot of places and there's a lot of things. And we're reevaluating all of this. Because what 
has tended to happen is we've created our tools for managing projects, and then we just throw them on the web and share them. Well, they're not necessarily tools to help you participate in government projects. And so we're really looking at this and looking at trying to replace how we communicate to you in a way that really works for small businesses to know about projects. Um, so just looking at how we're managing them and looking at our management tools isn't necessarily the best tool, and we're really interested in your feedback and input. Uh, one of the things that we're getting better at is, um, is talking about what's coming up. So today, uh, Mike North, we, we did a, uh, we started supply diversity around construction projects with an outreach, two outreach events for every project, one in Seattle and one at, as part of the site walkthrough. We quickly exhausted you. Uh, you know, there's an outreach event almost every week, and and some of you stopped coming. So one of the things that we understood was, well, let's aggregate the outreach events into a quarterly event. So we're talking about more than one project, and maybe doing more than one site. And let's tell people a little bit farther ahead than just the week before. So out here on the table, we're planning our first quarterly events. There'll be three: one in Seattle, one in Olympia. Um, and then another one in Spokane for the projects that are coming up next quarter. And so save the dates and the Seattle event will be on July 11th at the 4th and Battery U.S. Small Business Administration building. And so there we plan to talk about a number of projects coming up and, uh, and they're all identified here in the flyer. So we're getting better um, and we're really looking for all your feedback and input and, and the things you've been telling us have really been helping. All right, thank you. Questions? One. Um, my understanding is there is a, a list that you guys have developed for small contractors. Is that at Webs for Vendors? Well, the Webs is where you'll register as a small business. And that's even for consulting work? Yeah, for consulting work and everything. Uh -huh. yeah. So that's construction, goods and services contracting. And, and the most immediate effort right now is in construction, but very soon Mike North will be working on our uh, goods and services contracting so that we can get more supplier diversity ideas into that line of business. How yes. many are business owners here? Set up. How many are not certified? How many are certified? By the state? Yeah, by the state. Everybody is certified, set out. Everybody is certified. Sit down. Yeah, sit down if you're certified. Sit by the state. Yeah. Okay, so who needs to get certified? Okay. Oh. Enter my card. <laughs> Get certified. And, and if you need some help and some work, what needs to be done to fulfill the checklist of being certified, contact Business Development. He's not here today. Malcolm at Business Development, but Brian, you're working with Malcolm on that because we're trying to do everything we can to help you guys get certified. So you're on WEBS and you're in the state. In order to get credit and to show those percentages going up, you need to be certified first. So if you need any help with that, let us know. Somebody yeah. had questions? Oh, yeah. Can you the name of that individual again? Uh, <laughs> it's business development at Tabor 100. No, just do staff at Tabor100.org. Cynthia, make sure he gets the right board member. His email address is on the back of the newsletter. newsletter. There you go. Yeah. Questions? Yes. So, this, this list you have shows a lot of construction. Yes. really encourage you to come because one of the things is that we will have um, you know uh, our project managers there and then the a &E firms that are going that did the pre-design will be there too so I think it's just a great chance to connect and know but the real purpose is for my people to know you and um, and so that's really important I really encourage you to come Brian. I overheard you say something about the fact that DS is not the owner of these projects. So if you're dealing with the if you're dealing with the contractor and DES is in, in fact the owner, the way the city of Seattle is on their project, so there is some influence regarding uh, minority business, uh, uh, women-owned business 
if in fact you aren't the owner and, and don't have the final say, if you, if, if you will, regarding what you would like prime contractors to do in terms of involving our, our firms, where is where is the influence? How no. do you make prime contractors understand that you do, you, you want to see the tenants and, well, and such? We have that. We the uh, let me kind of clarify a little bit there. So the college may own the property and and the two B building. But um, in those cases, they do not have purchase authority for construction. So that's with DES. So DES has a construction authority. And so we have that. What, I think what's important there is that when we talk about supplier diversity at the state of Washington, and you might have seen that governor's slide, he said state agencies and higher education. Um, we are working there to make sure that the supplier diversity message isn't just coming from Department of Enterprise Services, but it's also the owners involved, so that we get the owner involved in supplier diversity too as well. Because beyond the building, the college is also making procurements every day. And again, we want them to become more aware of, of the way we're trying to increase supplier diversity so that they can increase it, and not only um, as we're trying to do it on the construction project for them, but as in the areas where they also have purchase authority.